Hello and welcome to Estuary TV News with me, James Dunn. On today's show, a short, sharp shock to get college students to think hard about road safety. And the rambler who has battled cancer and took a 10 mile hike on his 80th birthday. And finally, Tom Reid takes a look back at the results for the sport over the weekend. But first, here's Erica Barker with the news headlines. The headlines today. Figures reveal more than 50 children in North East Lincolnshire are waiting for foster carers or adoptive parents to come forward. And animal lovers in our region are being urged to guard against thieves targeting their dogs. But first, more than 12 tonnes of asbestos has been dumped in North East Lincolnshire this year alone, according to council figures. The news comes as a fly-tipping offender has this week been caught red-handed, dumping tonnes of toxic asbestos in and around a disused garage in Collin Avenue in Grimsby, which has been the site of previous fly-tipping incidents earlier this month. The council, in alliance with other agencies, caught the offender following a recent crackdown on the dumping of illegal waste and a public appeal for information. More than 50 children in North East Lincolnshire whose families are unable to care for them are in need of more permanent homes. That's according to the Fostering and Adoption Service. They're urging people who are able to offer a loving, stable environment to come forward to ensure all youngsters are giving the best start in life. There are currently 35 naught to 6 year olds on the adoption list, with a further 15 to 20 children looking for a foster home. Those working at the service say making a difference in the life of a child is incredibly rewarding. The children that come into care come in because their family have been unable to look after them and they've often been in very neglectful situations, maybe not have attended school, maybe not have attended health appointments, uh, may have been witness to things like domestic violence or drug misuse. So coming into a foster placement and looked after by carers who look after children, provide routines and boundaries, make sure they get to school, make sure they get to school in clean uniforms, make sure they do their homework, make sure they have healthy eating lifestyles, do activities like play football and make sure they have lots of uh, opportunities to enjoy normal, safe, secure family life. This week is National Lesbian, Gay and Transgender Adoption Week and today an information event is being held at St James's Hotel in Grimsby where everyone is welcome. It's a myth that um, gay and lesbian couples can't adopt um, children um, and we're trying to get it out to the media that um, we would welcome people from these areas. North Lincolnshire Council's trading standards team is warning householders against employing people who call at the door offering building work or general repairs. Trading standards officers across Yorkshire and the Humber say they've already followed up on a number of complaints involving rogue traders and that all too often people are tricked into agreeing to unnecessary expensive and poor quality work. To mark Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, the charity Ovarian Cancer Action is calling for all women, especially those with a significant family history of either breast or ovarian cancer, to be BRCA aware. Following Angelina Jolie's announcement last year that she has the BRCA1 gene mutation, the inherited faulty gene, which led her to have a preventative double mastectomy to reduce her risks of developing breast cancer, more women in the UK are now coming forward asking about preventative surgery. The charity has launched an online risk calculator at ovarian.org.uk designed to help people make more informed choices about whether testing should be considered. Humberside police say they're cracking down on the number of people putting their lives at risk by not wearing a seat belt. In an attempt to educate drivers about the significant dangers they face by not taking a few seconds to belt up before they drive, they'll be specifically targeting those who are breaking the law. For 20 years it has been illegal to fail to wear a seat belt when travelling as the driver or a passenger in a motor vehicle and someone who fails to do so faces an on-the-spot fine of £100. Jerry Green Dog Rescue is encouraging dog lovers to pause for thoughts and keep their dogs safe from thieves. According to police figures, from January 1st to October 31st last year, 911 cats and dogs were reported stolen in the UK, the equivalent of three pets every day. 
With Staffordshire, Bull Terriers and Labradors topping the list when it comes to the breeds most targeted. They're urging people to avoid tying their dogs up outside shops and leaving them alone in a car and encouraging people to take advantage of their free microchipping service. That's all from me. Until next time, goodbye. Thanks, Erica. Now, speed dating and road safety are two things that you wouldn't necessarily think go hand in hand, but they were a match made in heaven for emergency services who held an innovative workshop for young people at Scunthorpe's John Leggett College. Students got a chance to speak to people who deal with road traffic accidents and see the impact that they have on people's lives every day. But they only got a few seconds with each person before moving on. Emma Lingard went along to find out more. These youngsters are learning about the dangers and consequences of reckless driving. Set up by the Tom Foundation following the death of Driftfield teenager Tom Atkinson, who was killed in 2005 while a passenger in a car. It aims to raise driver awareness. The main aims are to provide help and support to other families who go through the same thing, but also to educate young people about road safety. While successful in East Yorkshire, the programme is being rolled out into northern Lincolnshire and John Leggett College was the first to join. Over the course of time, about 500 of our students will take part in driver awareness activities, um, such as the event today, which is a very interactive, um, quite sort of um, emotive event for students. But they'll also have the opportunity to take part in simulated driving activities um, and um, discussions and so it, 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 it reaches right across our student body and for us it's as important as preparing students for the next, next stages in, in life really. I mean being at college is often about understanding life changes, what they mean for you and how to cope with them and to be honest with you driving is one of those life changes, I think we'd all agree with that. Various agencies were involved in the event to deliver the road safety message and it's something that worked. I'd probably say like kind of the cost of like the, the manpower that kind of goes into a call out. You know, if there's a big accident, the amount of like people, personnel that have to go out there, you know, helicopters and just the, the sheer expense of it all really is quite amazing in its own right. You know, that's, that's kind of what shocked me really. Um, quite a lot of things have shocked me, like um, what can happen to you in a crash from things and um, quite a lot of things upset me as well. Those stories about people being hurt and the families being hurt as well. It's horrible. As a result, one student has decided to raise money for the charity after being moved by the cause. Well, it was coming into our Insights programme and I thought it would be a really good chance for us to actually get involved as we are the first people to actually have this charity come into our college, which is really exciting. And I thought, we're all young people here. We are coming up on driving and I thought, well, you know, it is something that is quite relevant to us and it seems like a really good charity to get behind. So hopefully we're raising lots of money for the work that they're doing. Thanks, Emma. What do you do for your 80th birthday? A cup of tea with the family, maybe a meal out with friends? Well, not for Ronald Kirkby, who headed out for a brisk 10 mile walk. Ronald is fit as a fiddle after beating bowel cancer with the help of Grimsby's Hospital. So instead of gifts, he asked people to donate to the Bottoms Up appeal to give something back to the people that helped him survive. I went to meet Ronald at his home in Healing and we even went for a little walk together. Ron has been a regular walker with the Grimsby and Louth Ramblers for more than 20 years. This year he turned 80, but he's not about to let that stop him. In fact, he took a 10 mile hike to celebrate. Um, we walk every week, uh, always on a Wednesday with the local group, sometimes Saturdays, sometimes Sundays. So on average we probably do about 15 miles every week. And in fact I think the older you get you maybe enjoy it more because you're still able to do it, which is very fortunate. He may be fit now but the last few years were no stroll in the park for Ron. In 2008 he was diagnosed with bowel cancer but with surgery and chemotherapy he managed to beat the disease. And he thinks regular walking helped him stay fit and healthy enough to give cancer the boot. And once that was done, it's amazing how quickly the body recovers. So when I came home, my wife used to say, we'll go for a walk. Initially, it was to one lamppost and back and then two lampposts. But again, with encouragement from my friends and our family, 
you do a bit more and a bit more and keep pushing yourself. And then by March, I got back to doing 10 miles, which was absolutely wonderful. If, I think if you're fitter for a start, you have a lot more chance of recovery. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely convinced and I think everybody, if it's possible, they should exercise somehow and do it to get fit or keep fit. Since beating the disease, Ron's never looked back, but he hasn't forgotten the people who helped him either, like consultant Henry Pearson, a surgeon at the hospital. In 2011, Ron, his wife and two friends raised £1,200 for the Bottoms Up appeal, walking 55 miles in just five days. And this year, he asked friends and family to donate, rather than give him gifts, raising a further £300. I think it's very important to try to put something back, because... Um, Mr Pearson himself has done an awful lot of fundraising for the Bottoms Up Appeal and he's trying to get better equipment and things that will make things better for people in the future. So to me it was very important to try to help with this. But there's more to this hobby than staying fit and healthy or raising money. No, it's a social aspect as well. Um, this past few years there's been 10, 12 of us and we've holidayed together, we've been to Switzerland, we've been to Austria, walking holidays and weekends away and things like that. So again, it's a big part of our life. And after 20 years walking and 55 years of marriage, Ron and his wife Lynn will keep marching on. I do puff up hills a little bit more maybe, but, uh, but no, I've got no intentions of stopping for a long time. And I can tell you it wasn't easy keeping up with Ronald. Now, here's Tom Reid with a look back at the weekend sport. There was plenty of controversy at Hull City's KC Stadium this weekend. The Tigers suffered a 4-1 defeat to Newcastle, but it was an incident between Alan Pardew and Hull midfielder David Mailer that stole the headlines. The Magpies manager appeared to headbutt Mailer after a collision on the sidelines which led for calls for him to be sacked. Pardew has been fined £100,000 by the club and the FA says it will investigate further. Scunthorpe missed the chance to go top of Skybet League 2 as they dropped points at Newport. They conceded a second late goal for a second game in a week, having led 2-1 with goals from Paddy Madden and David Sayers. Their game ended 2-2. Grimsby beat Salisbury 2-0 at Bundle Park thanks to skipper Craig Disley's ninth goal of the season and a solo effort from Alex Rodman. James McKeown made a fine save from Glenn Wilson when it was only 1-0. Lincoln secured a 3-2 win away at Aldershot thanks to, yet again, Ben Tomlinson's fine form. He scored the winner in the 71st minute in what was his 11th goal in 13 games. North Ferriby beat Vauxhall Motors 2-0 in the Conference North to remain two points behind current leaders AFC Telford. In the Tool Station at Northern Counties East League Division 1, Grimsby Borough lost 2-1 against AFC Emily at the Bradley Football Development Centre. Cleethorpe's Town drew away at Hallam thanks to an 87th minute equaliser from Luke Maskell. Meanwhile, Louth lost 4-2 away at Selby Town. The visitors were winning 2-1 at one stage, but threw the lead away. In the Evo Stick Northern Premier League First Division South, Brigtown beat Loughborough Dynamo 2-1 thanks to second-half goals from Joshua Nicholl and Paul Ashton. Goal lost 4-2 away to Carlton Town. In the TSW Printers Scunthorpe and District Football League Division 1, Barnetby United were beaten 4-1 away to Swinefleet. In rugby, Cleethorpes lost 23-16 at home to Belper. Grimsby beat East Retford 35-20. And Market Raisin and Louth lost 27-22 in a close game away to Colville Firsts. In hockey, Grimsby First men's lost 3-1 to Rotherham, but the women's first team beat Newlands 8-0, while the second team beat Lincoln Thirds 7-0. Both games were away from home. In ice hockey, Hull Stingrays lost 2-1 at home to Dundee Stars. And that's it for the sport. I'm Tom Reid. Thanks, Tom. Now, that's all from me too. Don't forget that if you have any news or views that you'd like to share with us, get in touch by phone on Grimsby 315561. Visit our Facebook page or tweet us at Estuary TV or email news at estuary.tv. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.